Okay, thanks for that. Um, yeah, so pretty much with uh, rips that I've been working on for 30, like 30 years as a professional lifeguard. So after seeing so many people are uh, getting caught in rips and, and I think the messaging we've had over the years has, has been inconsistent and not um, the same as, as what everyone's been putting out there. So watching how rips work over all these years and, and you know, we keep saying the rips are dangerous, but it's really um, people um, that swim in rips, that, that, that their behaviour makes it dangerous. So we found that 90% of rips, if you float, you'll float across the sandbank and stand up or the waves will push you back to shore. And pretty much I've been testing this theory now for probably three to four years. And when I'm working at the beach, I'll tell someone to float and go with the flow of the water and I won't have to go rescue them. As soon as they ignore that or they try and swim, they're generally the ones I've got to go rescue. So telling someone to swim when they're a rip is obviously not the right way. So from there, we, I decided to, um, you need to experience a rip. So we were getting kids uh, probably over the last 10 years and putting them in rips in a controlled environment. And we just get in the float, they'd float across onto the sandbank, walk in and then run back to the rip and jump in again. It ended up like a ride. So they started enjoying themselves and kids were getting the understanding of how to do it. Because there's always that theory of rips pull you under, which they don't if you just float it's just a flow of water that moves. All our rescues are probably about 20 metres from the shore. They're never out, there. very, very rarely they're out the back. Um, so that's what we found that saying, you know, going out to sea is probably not the right thing because people, as soon as they're in a rip, they panic. They think they're going to be you know, miles out to sea, but pretty much we'll just drift across onto the sandbank. So from there, I, I thought that, okay, I'm not going to be able to bring everybody to the beach and, and be in the, uh, in the rips. So I thought uh, virtual reality would probably be the way to go where you can take that to everybody. And we've developed now over four years to a, to a point where it's it's quite realistic, um, where you feel as though you're, you're flooding a rip yourself. I've got a video coming up shortly that'll show a little bit more. But there's new technology coming now from India as well, so we're, we'll advance even, even quicker. We're just trying to get some more funding to, to uh, move that forward. But the virtual reality basically goes in and, and shows you how to, um, uh, goes to a, a talk and then it goes in the tower up into a helicopter, flies over the rips, rips illuminate. You can see uh, how the rips sort of form. There's, there's so many different ways a rip can move. From there, you go under the rip, under the bottom of the ocean, and then you get an idea of how it all works underneath looking up on how rips work. And then from there, you actually get put in a rip and then learn how to float. So the main thing that we've realised is floating is probably the best way to go and that can work in all waterways. So we've been teaching kids nine month, 12 month year old in 10 by 10 minute lessons, they're floating on their back uh, with nappies, fully clothed, um, shoes on and everything. So if they take off, fall in the backyard pool, they'll be there floating. Same with rivers, lakes, dams. If you can float, you're not going to drown. So pretty much, from there, we've realised that this virtual reality and where we're going with it is going to be um, quite good to teach people, especially people that are, that are scared of the water. So maybe if we um, play the video and then we can um, do some questions after people sort of have a look at it. Australia is in the grip of a drowning epidemic. A man in his 50s was pulled from the a ocean. A two-year-old boy the was discovered unconscious. Today, the, the body of a 25-year-old man was Adding found to the long this... list of families who have been struck by tragedy these holidays. In 25 years of lifeguarding, I've never seen a start of a summer like this. In the past 12 months, 280 people have drowned. There's another swimmer out there, mate. Hello. It's crazy that so many people have drowned this year. 20 deaths in the past two weeks alone. When I was coming at him, I knew that his face was underwater. One bad decision can really affect someone's life. Now, it's the hottest start to summer in over 100 years. Oh, yeah, he's got him. Suddenly, I see the polar air come over. I look out into the water and I see a guy under. When you lose someone, it's not a good thing. Lifeguards are locked in a desperate battle. We've got lots of tourists non-familiar with the way the ocean works. Stop swimming here, because someone's going to disappear. Our main goal this summer is make sure no one drowns. Welcome to Water Safety VR.
This water safety VR experience is immersive, designed to show you the consequences of a bad decision and how to make a good one. We take you on a chopper ride, put you on the ocean floor and even into a virtual interactive rip experience. With this new technology, we can see how rips work, unlike any way we have ever been able to look at rips before. This program will educate participants on how to identify what a rip looks like, how to stay calm, float and survive if you get caught in a rip. Australia had 260 drownings last year and 75% of drowning victims are Australian born. So anyone is at risk. Two out of three ocean-related drownings are caused by rips. In spite of all our efforts and investment, drownings are going up. We've turned to innovation to help combat what is an epidemic. We are going to give you the knowledge to make smarter decisions and take better actions, which will save lives. So yeah, so you can see that um, the virtual reality, it's, it's something that's gonna sort of um, move forward into the future and, and teaching people on how to float and survive in any waterway. And also we'll be able to put in different languages that is be able to press on the language so they can understand the voiceover. Um, also we can go through, uh, develop uh, rock fishing. We can develop uh, how do you teach uh, CPR, everything will be in this one package. How wonderful. Thanks, Hoppo. That's great. Um, what a wonderful way to get people involved. Have you tried it? Um, have you been able to test it and try it out with a bunch of like a different group of populations at this stage or, you know? Um, yeah, we've had, um, we've had a whole lot of people go through with, um, and what we did was we gave them the virtual reality uh, they went through that and the knowledge they received from that. And these are people for, that have no idea about the ocean. And then we put them in the ocean and then they knew what to do with the, with the floating. So it really worked well. I mean, 90% of um, it gets retained in your brain. So it's really working well. It's definitely um, something that you can take to anywhere in the, in the world, anywhere inland where people can't get to the beaches. And I think that uh, the floating is probably the best message, message we can get out there because the longer you can float, the more chance someone will rescue you. And, and if, if not, you'll be able to save yourself anyway. So, you know, that, that's probably the best message that we should be pushing uh, all around the world.